very well and the common input which we got from everyone was that you can trust that mr mukant can speak very well that feeling had we, we had always got that he actually speaks very well and therefore when the topic of trust and trustees under the indian trust act 1882 was thought about that we could speak we thought that why not take a person who is also on the editorial board of the law journals and and when we were partnering with legal eagle elites group we thought that once there is lakshmi and there has to be a trust so the full lakshmi can only come when we bring the person who can give us the insights on the trust act of in trust and trustees act but before we ask mr mukant who is a renowned noyam and especially our previous webinar has done well i would request adi lakshmi logamoti to share her thoughts and then we will ask mr mukant to take us over the bird eye view and the over insights on the fact of trust and trustees act as to whether the corporation could do whether it the family can run into this whether an insolvent person can act upon it and so on and so on as to whether <coughs> there could be a fixed beneficiary discretionary beneficiary before all, taking all these insights i request adi lakshmi logamoti the knowledge partner with us to share her thoughts and then we will request mr mukant to take the thing over good 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 evening everyone who are present here uh, it is such a pleasant evening that i am joining again with the beyond law clc uh, partnering as a knowledge partner in the uh, webinars it is uh, indeed a, a pleasure to host uh, mr mukund he is such a uh, uh, speaker that he speech will be like a song he paints the session as such whatever topic he takes in he does justice for it and uh, he has done so many uh, sessions for the legal legal zelite platform and many other platforms down south and uh, it is indeed uh, 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 a pleasure to listen to him uh, thank you so much vikas for inviting legal legal zelite uh, to partner along with you and uh, uh, we uh, we both of us will welcome mukund on behalf of all the participants to this uh, session of today thank you so much in fact we are having back to back session once the session gets over there is one session on mediation uh, by mr jawad uh, advocate and a mediator has already done a session a uh, couple of session on the platform beyond law clc so whoever is willing to join in after this session you can join in there thank you so much for giving me this opportunity i welcome mukund on behalf of Uh, the beyond law clc and the legal legal select welcome mr sir yeah mr mukant yeah mr mukant yes i thank both of you for the warm welcome and uh, my greetings to all the participants here today's session is on the indian trust act we are going to deal with deal about the trust and the trustees under the indian trust act 1882 this is basically with respect to private trusts as we all know uh the trust is uh, can be categorized into two broad categories one is a private trust and another one is a public trust this private trust is to benefit certain individual fixed persons or a defined group of persons in case of public trust we cannot ascertain those persons it is for the general public it is for anyone but the purpose must be achieved before going into the subject it is most essential to understand the term trust trust is nothing but in simple terms it is confidence 
a person is having confidence on the other to do something it is a surety a secure thought a sure decision that instead of me the other person would do we can relate it to just like a contract of agency i could not do it but my power of attorney can do it so we delegate our job to the other person but here in trusts we give the entire power to the trust so that the trustee the person who has taken that confidence is entitled to act as if it is his own property so we can say trust equalizing confidence trust act or a confidence act an act to denote confidence but once we go into the act the last part of the section of the chapter of the act namely chapter number 9 says about obligations in the nature of trust that is all other chapters deals about mainly on trust trustees duties obligations responsibilities etc with with all with eight chapters the entire gamut of the trust act is completed but in the ninth chapter section 80 to 96 deals about the indications of a trust suppose you miss a product somebody has it then he is bound to do return it to you now he takes the character of a trustee that is the last chapter now this trust act is divided into nine segments chapter 1 to chapter 9 this chapter 1 to chapter 9 contains totally 96 sections this deals about generally as all the acts would do about the preliminaries this says about how a trust can be created who can be called a trustee who can be called an author and what is the right of the trustee what is the duty of him what is he expected to do suppose if he does not do the duty will it amount to breach what is the obligation he has then to whom he is doing it why not the person himself Who, who has uh, who has created the trust could not do then for the, uh, to whom it has been done that is the beneficiary suppose what happens on the death of a person that is the trustee whether uh, the, the, what is the next step if there are group of trustees how they have to behave and how they have to coordinate with themselves all these aspects are detailedly dealt in this trust act indian trust act 1882 the contract act came into force in 1872 transfer of property act came into force in 1882 trust act came into force in march 1882 it is essential that to note that the trust act is connected with the contract act as well as the transfer of property act we have similar provisions for example section 5 of the transfer of property act has a direct bearing to understand what is the nature of trust section 7 of the transfer of property act uh, has a direct bearing on the competency of the trustees similarly contract act section uh, section 11 has a direct bearing on the trust act section 23 has a direct bearing registration act has a direct bearing so 
all these aspects we shall cover one after the other in broad category i will just sum up chapter wise and we will go into it detail chapter 1 deals mainly about preliminaries as how other uh, actions uh, uh, how other uh, um, acts deal this act also deals about some of the preliminaries like who is a trustee what do we mean by notice etc the same thing in pari materia with the transfer of property will come into play the second chapter deals about creation of trust this deals about uh deals from uh, it has been dealt uh, dealt from section 4 to section 10 the other chapter uh deals about the rights and the powers of the trustee then the disabilities of the trustee chapter number 5 chapter number 6 deals about the beneficiaries only one chapter allocated to beneficiary is chapter number 6 this deals about the rights and liabilities of the beneficiaries even though there is only one chapter dealing about beneficiaries all other chapter chapters of this particular act is concerned mostly about this chapter only because he is the main person who is going to receive the benefits under the trust then chapter 7 deals about vacating the office of the trust chapter 8 extinction of trust then chapter 9 as i said is the obligation in the nature of trust that is some of the acts like whether the specific uh, performance contracts can it be related to trust what is the fiduciary relationship that is dealt here so all these aspects are dealt under different chapters now uh when we see section 3 of the trust act it deals about trust order of trust trustee beneficiary trust to property instrument of trust breach of trust registered notice so these are all the various terms that has been dealt in under section 3 of the act to understand the main purpose of this section once we read section 3 we can get a clear picture about the entire act because this 3 is the most essential section which will be dealt in all other sections we shall take the word trust what does it mean trust as i said is nothing but a confidence imposed by one on the other now when there is confidence if i trust you or if i have a confidence on you then what happens the the, the other person that is we say the person who had to act upon that confidence is now obligated to act i believe a person that he will do such and such job for me so that person we will say from a to b if i am a being the owner he imposes confidence on b that is trusts b saying my child is there i am very sick so b that is we can call him a trustee please do the following acts for and on behalf of the minor till he attains majority so a reposes confidence on b no b is obligated to act he is obligated to obligated to discharge that confidence what a had on him so when we see section section 3 of the act the word trust has a wonderful uh, definition trust is an obligation annexed to the ownership of the property and arising out of confidence accepted by owner for the benefit of another so trust is an obligation what is an obligation we can relate it to the specific relief act section 2a of the specific relief act 
obligation means a duty enforceable by law is an obligation so if the trustee does it breaches the trust then a suit can be filed against him to rectify the errors that he has committed to account so for whatever uh, mishaps that if at all he, uh, he he has he has acted against the beneficiary so there is a, there is an obligation for him he has to discharge the duties uh, mentioned by the author of the trust that is the creator what does it have it is mostly upon the property and the trust is arising out of confidence and that the person accepts that confidence most important as how we have dealt in gift in gift the property the donor gives the property to the donee the donee accepts it here there are three parties in case of gifts we have only two parties that is one person is giving the other person is taking in so far as the trust is concerned there are no three parties the, uh, the creator there is the author settlor the trustee and the beneficiary so if the trustee must have to accept that he will act on the confidence reposed by the author and this has been done only for the benefit of the beneficiary that is the ultimate person to whom the entire confidence is going to work this section also deals about author of the trust we have to uh, mainly uh, see one particular word it says about declares declaring the same word will come in section 5 of the present act that is the trust act a person who reposes or declares confidence is the author we will see when we see how this uh, the word declare is most essential when we read section 5 unless there is a declaration there cannot be a creation of the trust now the trustee you will be know that he a person who accepts the trust is a trust the beneficiary we know who gets the ultimate benefit uh, once the trust is uh, accepted he is called the beneficiary the trust to property section 3 deals about this also the trust to property what is the trust property is a subject property this can be movable or immovable now the deed we will go to the trust deed it is also called as an instrument of trust there is an instrument declaring the trust declaring trust is a deed is it, it is mainly it is a non testamentary instrument it is a written deed then the section 3 deals about breach of trust that is obligation is not fulfilled registration registration is compulsory now this also deals with this section deals with one another term notice this section that is this term notice is a replica of section 3 of the transfer of property act with some additions and some deletions in this section we all know what the notice is notice is a fact making a person know about a fact so the other person knows something on a fact what becomes notice if the person willfully fails to inquire then it also becomes notice if he acts negligently that is he avoids notice of that fact then also it becomes notice and what is not mentioned in transfer of property act is mentioned here that is section 229 of the contract act that is information to agent is a notice to principal in section 3 of the transfer of property act we have two other uh, 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 informations regarding notice that is registration amount into notice and possession amount into notice that is not found here so once we read section 3 of the transfer of property act it is the same as in the trust act now the purpose 
it must be for a lawful purpose. This we can connect it with section 23 of the Contract Act. A trust can be created only if it has a lawful purpose. What is lawful purpose? There are five elements to decide. It is exactly the same as found in section 23 of the Contract Act. It says A. That is, it should not be forbidden by law. Two, it should not defeat the provisions of any law. Three, it should not be made fraudulently. Four, it should not involve or imply injury to the person or property. Five, the court, if it regards it as immoral or opposed to public policy, then the trust is void. So all five elements, that is namely forbidden by law, it should not be defeated, uh, not, not forbidden by law, it should not be defeated by the provisions of any other law, should not be uh, fraudulent, should not injure anyone, should not be immoral or opposed to public policy. If that is found, then the entire trust is void. What will happen if in a trust deed, a person says, see, if I want to create a trust, the way in which we are going to do is smuggle the items, get the profit, then feed children, feed poor children. Now, whether this type of trust is valid, it is not valid. If the deed contains an immoral act out of which a moral act can be performed, if it is in the same deed, then the whole trust is invalid. The whole trust is void. So that cannot be done. So the, it must be for a moral purpose. The next one is property. It should be it can be either movable property or immovable property. In case of movable property, it can be created in two ways. One by a non-testamentary instrument and another one by a testamentary instrument. If it is by a non-testamentary instrument, it should be declared in writing. That's what I said, declaration. It should be declared in writing and further it should be registered. It, 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 it comes into operation when this formality is completed. But in case of a non a, a testamentary instrument, a will, a, a, example a will, then it should be declared by the author that a trust is created. The, this person is appointed as a trustee. But this comes into operation on the death of the person. In the former case, it comes into operation when these formalities are completed, that is a trusted deed is executed, declared and registered. But in the latter case, that is in the case of a testamentary instrument or a will, it comes into force on the death of the person because it can be revoked at any time. So in case of a movable property, it goes by just a declaration. That is sufficient. Nothing had to be seen in this. Now, one thing must have to be seen, whether the author has the intention to create a trust. A trust is created with the intention to do some reasonable, with reasonable certainty. This can be either by words or by actions. So the intention must have to be present in case of creation of the trust. The purpose must be there the, benefit, the beneficiaries must be identified and that should, that should be a property. Else, we cannot call it a trust. Example, uh, if, there is a, if there is a bill and uh, if the trustee goes and probates the bill, then it's by implication, he has accepted the trust. So it is by deed. It, it, it is by implication, even though uh, it has not been registered. 
So who can create a trust? This we can relate it to section 11 of the Contract Act. A person competent to contract can create a trust. A trust can be created by or on behalf of the minor. That is also possible, but a qualifying clause is it can be created only with the permission of the court. Else it cannot be created because minor is not competent to contract. At the same time, who can be a beneficiary? Any person can be a beneficiary, but he must be capable of holding the property. Suppose what will happen if the beneficiary says, no, I don't want to have the property. The beneficiary is given the right to renounce. Similarly, a trustee is also given the right to renounce. I don't want to be a trustee, he can say. But once he accepted to be a trustee, then he had to act upon the trust. Similarly, a beneficiary can renounce. He can inform the author or inform the trustee that he is not ready to accept all the benefits arising out of the trust. Or in another case, if he sets up title, an inconsistent title against the trust, claims against the trust, then also it is deemed that the beneficiary has disclaimed the benefits given under the document. Now, when we see the competency of the beneficiary, we also have to see the competency of the trustee. The same thing, a person who is capable of holding the property because the, 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 the trustee must have to hold the property and then act on the property. So if he is capable of holding the property, then he is, he is entitled to become a trustee. Because this act involves elements of discretion. It involves the element of competence to contract. As I said, he is not bound to accept the trust. He can always say, no, I am disclaiming it. I don't want to be a trustee. The trust can also contain several trustees. If it contains the several trustees, then one of them can always disclaim it. No, I don't want to be a trustee. This is possible. Now, we have no undergone, we have no seen the elements of trust. Now, what is the duties of the trustee? Everything have everyone has a duty. What is the duty? The duties are nothing but he has to obey the trust, obey and act on the deed. It is nothing but an instruction given in the deed. It is like a manual. He must have to do as dictated in the manual. If a property is directed to be sold in a public auction, he cannot take the choice of going into a private sale. If he is given some acts to be performed in a particular manner. If he is asked to sell the property in lots, he can only sell the property in lots. If he is asked to sell the property in a particular time, he has to execute that within a particular time or at least in a reasonable time. So it is nothing but a direction by the trust, by, by the settler or the author, and he had to act upon the directions. What else he has to do? He has to just execute the trust, simple, first and foremost duty. He has to obey, but he has to see the safety. What is the safety? He cannot do anything impracticable uh, if he is asked to do. He cannot do something illegal if he is asked to do. So whatever within the legal parallels, he can do. If he is asked to pay the debt, then he must have to pay the debt on the debt from the debt of the instrument. Or if he is asked to pay the debt by virtue of a testament, then his duty commences only after the death of the testator, only after the death of the author or the person who has written the bill. Now, he must have to, he has another foremost duty. He must be very well informed about the trust. He must have to get acquaintance with the, with the trust. He must know how to do it. That is another thing. The another factor is, he must have to protect the title of the property. He cannot allow it 
to be claimed by others so that is also these are all inbuilt duties which anyone have to do but these are all segmentized in the form of sections for academic purposes we are reading one after the other that is why section wise the other foremost duty is he cannot set up an adverse title against the, uh, the the trust he cannot say it is his property so he must have to take all the care and caution one other factor we can see is that if it is a perishable item then he had to act immediately to encash it he cannot keep it uh, uh, idle the other factor is that he should not also be partial if there are several beneficiaries a duty is cast upon him to be impartial he cannot take advantage he cannot give an advantage to one beneficiary and uh, the other uh, 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 and make the other one suffer the benefit now he has a duty to give the accounts this is one another thing which we all most important duty is investment of trust money the more we we have to be most uh, most uh, 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 we have the section section 20 contemplates that he cannot invest the money except the provider under section 20 that is the academic uh, thing that we have to concentrate on that is he he can he is given he is authorized to invest only in or only as a specific i mean only in the central government securities and that is contemplated under section 20 of course he can redeem uh things that is connected to the it's, it's nothing but consequential now when he has a duty he also has some liabilities what is the liability if there is a breach of trust he is liable then he cannot uh, uh, how can there be a breach of trust if he has not executed the duty he has not in, uh, uh, invested the money if it is cash he must have to pay uh, a, a simple interest of 6% if he has if he, if he has not acted acted diligently that has suffered loss if a profit could not be made only because of his uh, negligent attitude then he has to compensate the profit also so these are all the things that the trustee must have to be vigilant enough and one another liability is that he cannot ask for a set off but at the same time if there are several set trustees he cannot be made directly liable for another trustee who has acted negligently in spite of his caution but if he has contributed to that then he is liable for it one sole says if the previous trustee has acted negligently then he cannot be made liable for the previous trustee's fault so these are all the duties that follows the rights of the, the, the these are all the liabilities that follows the duties of the trustee but he has some rights also to act upon the trust he must have to possess the title deed he is entitled for reimbursements he is entitled for indemnity he has a right to apply to the court and get the opinion of the uh, opinion of the court but he need not file a suit he can file an application that is sufficient then he has the right to sell this right is granted under section 39 right to get the opinion of the court is granted under section 34 of the trust act section 39 deals about his power to convey he has or he has the authority to do it so these are all the rights given to the trustees he has the right to give the receipts he has the right to comp compromise enter into compromise for and on behalf of the uh, minor or the beneficiary so these are all the uh, the rights he has but these rights survive till these rights is suspended this can be suspended by a decree of court only or if the beneficiary says he, he, he can beneficiary also can go move, move an application to the court that the trustee is not acting as per the directions of the author 
So these are all the liabilities that he suffers. The another interesting thing is the disability. See, trustee cannot ask certain things. Most important thing is he cannot renounce the trust once he has accepted. If he says that he is acting, then he has to act. The only remedy available to the trustee is to go before the court, seek the permission of the court, and then get himself relieved. And the other factor, if the beneficiary is accepted, then with their permission. the trustee can come out of the trust or if the instrument permits him to come out uh, come out of the trust on a particular period or with the consent of the other trustees or beneficiaries whatever it is it must be dictated in the trust deed itself the other factor is if he is disabled to act singly if there are several trustees then he cannot act singly he must have to consult them and then only can act that is one embargo for the trustee of course the other thing is that he cannot delegate the act uh, uh, given to him he has a control he, he, he even though he has a discretionary power one another aspect section 50 the trustee cannot charge for services he must have to do it freely he cannot be he need not be paid unless if the deed mentions it that he is entitled for some remuneration or if the beneficiary says no no you have acted so much you have strained yourself and uh, and you can be reasonably reasonably compensated these are all the two circumstances under which the uh, trustee is entitled for some type of remuneration or it must be granted by the court else he is not entitled for Uh, he must have to do. Uh, he must be not entitled for remuneration. He must have to do free service. Another uh, problem with the trustee is that he cannot use that property for himself. That, that he is disabled. He cannot use for his office or to make his own profit. Even if the trust property is is idle, and uh, he cannot purchase the property. uh he cannot purchase the property either by himself or through an agent so these are all the difficulties of being a trustee he is obligated to show a clean chit and no one should question him that is the background factor to be considered while academically reading about section 50 and 52 then he must not lend money to other trustees that is also another factor with co trustees he cannot invest these are all the disabilities the act bars the trustee from dealing in such type type of things now as i said even though this particular session is about the trust and the trustees we cannot miss a sight of the beneficiary because the entire benefits have to go only to the beneficiaries and if we take this chapter out the trust act will be out. the purpose of the trust act is to see to that the beneficiary gets everything that he is entitled to do. the beneficiary has certain rights and liabilities that is dealt in chapter 5 of course the beneficiary can say the trustee to execute the trust as directed by the author if he is competent enough he can say if suppose there are funds in the trust the beneficiary can say no i am competent to act therefore i have i relieve you from your services that is possible if the property is a landed property then he can take possession of it if he is competent to contract even though before time period allotted to him that is permissible with the concurrence of the trustee and beneficiary if they enter into an arrangement lawfully then the beneficiary can take charge even though the time has not ripened 
he can take the copies of the instrument he can get the accounts from the trustee he can transfer his beneficial interest to any other person he can sue the trustee he can move the court say that he needs a proper trustee if in his uh, understanding that the existing trustee is not acting as dictated in the trust or not he is not capable enough if suppose a trustee is going out of india then he can ask for a change in the trustee so these are all the rights a beneficiary has he can replace the trustee if the trustee has become insolvent he can approach the court take away this trustee appoint a new trustee that is possible so the beneficiary is equally powered to see to that the trust is executed properly to his benefit he can see if the trustee has manipulated the trust property he can ask for the bringing it back restore it to its original position the trustee cannot mingle one trust property with the other one so that is not possible all that is provided that is he cannot blend it and uh, he cannot partner with uh, some other uh, beneficiaries so these are all the things the beneficiary can compel a trustee to restore the benefits that he is entitled to at the same time the beneficiary has certain liability he cannot contribute to the breach of trust then then he is also answerable he cannot throw the blame on the trustee so these are all the broad factors that helps the beneficiary to protect his rights he can question the trustees now we have dealt with the creation of trust and about the trustees the duties of the trustee what are all the rights he has what is the obligation what is the disability and we have slowly marched to a portion regarding the entitlement of the beneficiary now what about the vacation of office what about if a trustee dies what happens to the trust what happens to the office of the trust that is dealt in chapter 7 chapter 7 contains sections as a known fact and by discharge by discharge how a discharge can be made discharge can be in several ways if there is no trust at all but there is a deed saying so but there is no property then the trustee is discharged extinction of trust goes nothing to be acted upon if the trustee completes all his duties then everything is fulfilled the trust is completed if any directions as mentioned in the instrument is complied with the purpose and the object of the trust is over the trust is extinguished that is the trust comes to an end if suppose one trustee says according to him he is not enter, he, he is not uh, he is no more willing to act he approaches the court and a new trustee is appointed so far as so far uh, 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 in so far as he is concerned the trust is existing extinguished he need not bother with the trust anymore suppose if the beneficiary accepts yes a beneficiary is relieving him by consent if he is competent to contract then the officer is vacated if suppose court feels that he the, the trustee is not capable of fact or he is liable for breach of uh, trust then in that case also 
the court removes him so in all these six areas the trust extinguishes that is the confidence extinguishes the duty extinguishes so the trustee is removed from the trust by some means that is either by death or by discharge now suppose one trustee dies the other trustees can always continue the trust so the trust survives section 76 of the trust act survival of trust even on death the trust survives unless the instrument declares otherwise now can a trust be revoked as i pointed out i am almost uh, coming to the end of the session i am conscious that uh, 10 more minutes is uh, uh, the session had to be completed by 5 i'll just uh, for the purpose of uh, we have only a few portions to deal with i'll just continue and complete it within the time allotted to me now i i all i already pointed out that a trust can be revoked if a trust is created by will before the death of the testator it can be revoked at the pressure of the testator he can he says that if he says that no 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 i don't want to continue the trust yeah uh, there is no purpose then he can always withdraw his intention and before his death it can be by instruments with the help of the beneficiaries if it is case of uh, payment of debt then this uh, uh, payment to the creditors by an by, by a non testamentary instrument before it being communicated to the other creditors that such can be revoked at the pressure of the other when other says no i have to, i owe 10 lakhs to several creditors before a communication could be made to the other creditors that the purpose of the trust is to pay the obligations pay the debts of the other then even before the communication could reach the creditors the person can revoke the trust that is permissible under section 78 of the act but a trust cannot be revoked to defeat what the trustee have done have duly done so that once it is completed it is completed there again thereafter the other cannot say no 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 i am revoking the trust that is not possible now we are slowly moving into the last segment of the trust act again the trust and the trustees this chapter can be related to almost all cases like fiduciary relationship cases coming touching upon the contract cases not touching upon the contract but inspires confidence on the other section 80 to 96 how it creates a trust though even though there is no document in it this chapter deals with some of the sections which says a trust is is created even though there is no document to it how the most important section is section 88 fiduciary relationship an advantage gained by one person on the other who are all those persons a trustee an executor can take that advantage a partner can take that advantage an agent can take that advantage a lawyer can take that advantage a director of the company can take advantage so in this they misuse their position they take a pecuniary advantage over the other they compel a person they make the person believe that they are entering into a certain dealing or certain transaction purely upon the confidence they had on these persons if it is ultimately found to be under some type of undue influence or fraud or whatever it is 
then the entire transaction becomes void. For example, writing a gift deed, if the donor says, no, my son has prevailed over me, has coerced me, has taken me to the, uh, uh, the registration office and has appointed so and so as a trustee to make it believe that uh, it is a trust document itself, then implying section 88, the whole trust becomes void. What happens? The original owner must be restored with the benefit or it must, he must be given, returned the advantage so gained. Section 89 is a similar section to 88. Advantage gained by excise of undue claims. That is, an advantage is taken in derogation to the interest of another. So the person gaining must have to restore it. The entire chapter, chapter number nine, only deals with this thing. That is, if a person has taken an undue advantage over the other, then he becomes a trustee. He is obligated. Section three, where we read about to trust. Trust is an obligation annexed to the ownership of the property. So he is bound to re return whatever the, whatever the advantage that he has taken. An advantage taken by poor qualified owners who are all there. Tenant for life, a co-owner takes advantage, a mortgagee takes advantage using their position. If they take, take any undue advantage, then it should be returned. Classic uh, section is section 91. I wish to point out this particular section before we conclude the uh, our uh, uh, session today. This section, section 91, says about a property, acquiring a property with notice of existing contract. See, there is a sale agreement in which can be enforced. Pending sale agreement, somebody buys the property, knows, knowing very well that there is a sale agreement by the, these two parties. Then the purchaser becomes, he is now liable to return the advantage taken. He holds the property as a trustee. He holds the property for the benefit to give effect to this contract. So section 91 of the Trust Act has a bearing in specific relief act, in specific performance suits. So that is why I'm saying it is an obligation in the nature of trust. Even though there is no contract of trust between the parties, it creates an obligation in the nature of trust. The sale agreement holder, the subsequent purchaser, he has that he holds the property in the nature of the trust and he had to return the advantage to those persons who are entitled to the property. The, of course, section 96, the last section of uh, the Act, protects bona fide purchases. It protects them who have, who have whoever had purchased the property in good faith for consideration. So this is uh, the, now we have broadly seen about uh, several chapters uh, and had the entire picture about the, of the trust act uh, containing 10 chapters running to 96 sections. The first is the preliminary where it contains the trust, trust deeds or the beneficiary registration, etc. notice, etc. The second thing is about creation of trust. That is in the next chapter. It deals about the creation. The third chapter deals about the rights. But we are now coming into the, uh, the duties of the trustees and the liabilities of the trustees. And where the trustee is not liable for that act. The fourth chapter deals about the rights and the powers of the trustees. He has a right to execute the trust. He has the power to sell the property. And all the things must have to be done legally. He is entitled to hold. He is entitled to have acquaintance with the trust and everything. And we also saw chapter 5 dealing about the disabilities. Disabilities of the trustee. That is, he cannot renounce once he has accepted it. He cannot act singly. He cannot delegate. He cannot purchase the property. He cannot... Uh, 
uh, uh, charge for his own services made however it is skillful so this chapter this chapter number 5 qualifies his disqualifications is he had disabilities then chapter 6 we uh, read about uh, we saw about the beneficiaries the category where how he can impress the trustee and get the trust deed executed accounted uh, what are all the benefits that he is entitled he can ask for it he can move the court everything in the chapter 7 in chapter 7 we saw about vacating the office of the trust that is by death or by discharge there is by means of court or any other process then obligations in the nature of trust even though there is no contract of trust it creates an obligation in the nature of trust the person who is having the advantage must have to restore the benefit to the person entitled to so with this uh, uh, presentation i wish to conclude the session i request to mr vikas to take over and do the formalities of completing it yeah mr mukan so as usual the webinar was spot on i will just see the questions what are the principal applications of this trust act when where and by whom these trust may be created for what purpose how does the succession happen in these trust trust for pro, uh, trust properties yes see the trust it is created only for the beneficiary now the purpose must be lawful without a lawful purpose a trust cannot be created so far as succession is concerned it is mentioned in the deed itself generally if it is a non testamentary instrument the author takes all caution precaution to see to that his the, the trust is executed he will mention it one if one trustee dies then whoever is succeeding or it must be it, um, um, so these formalities will be prescribed in the trust deed itself that is how succession happens uh this is by gayatri uh, rajan please give an illustration for a private trust private trust we can see the person that is it is not a general public simple that is uh, doing service uh, uh, in a charitable basis to the general public is public trust that is we cannot ascertain to whom it is going he, any person can get it but in so far as a private trust is concerned a definite identity is created on the beneficiary if an identity if the beneficiary can be ascertained then it is a private trust else it is a public trust quantifiable if it is not quantifiable then it is a public trust this is by advocate modi procedure for creating to form a private trust for special needs of the uh, child can we create a private trust under the societies act in maharashtra or only execute trust deed under the indian trust act or do we require registration that is this trust act is a central act it is a central act it the act is very simple it says it can be done by a non testamentary instrument that is create a deed qualify the purpose of creating a trust that is the child concerned the protection of the child that is sufficient and it must be registered that is all what the contemplate uh, the act contemplates i am not concerned, i mean i am not that much uh, uh, how to say uh, conversant with the state laws uh, so far as maharashtra law is concerned i am not uh, conversant with it i am in the tail end of uh, india mm -hmm. this is once we are referring to the word non testamentary uh, for some people they would like to know because some common man common people also join yes explain that it is a simple question uh, testament testament non testament complete incomplete different indifferent it is nothing but an opposite word testament means a will 
a document created by the person saying that the property must have to go after his death that is a testament non testamentary instrument is document like sale deed gift deed exchange deed etc so testament is a will is a wish of the person to to, uh, to to mention as to what should happen after his lifetime non testamentary instrument is we have discussed in the transfer of property act it's an inter vivos transaction that is between two living individuals that is non testamentary instruments yes this is if trust is not registered the legal heirs the sale the property after the demise of the father the question is incomplete section 5 says section 5 says the trust must be registered it must be registered because a trust see what happens in a trust the author that, that is the owner detaches his right from himself and gives it to the trust it gives it to he gives it to some other person so he is no more a personal owner then the object mentioned in the trust must have to be complete so the heirs cannot sell it if the beneficiaries are named and it should have to go only to the beneficiaries yeah. yes satish kumar we are uh, we sometimes see on the news that trustees were removed by the court and some retired judges were appointed under what provision such things happens trustees are removed we see, we saw about the removal of trustees by court section 76 so it, it is under this act a trustee can be removed if there is if a breach can, could be mentioned or could be surfaced or if he is incapacitated to act then the court uh, can always remove the trust and that is permitted under the trust law itself yeah this is can there be more than one beneficiary in a single trust deed yes there can be multiple beneficiaries if there are two three sons the other can always give it to all the three sons the only thing is that the beneficiaries all may have, can accept the benefit if one one beneficiary says i don't want then he can always renounce it that is what we have seen under section 9 of the act yeah. advocate uh, modi what do official administrator of the trust no when do official administrator of the trust are appointed see this this act does not deal with them this is purely about private trust that is by operation of law official trustees are appointed by operation of law not by a document yeah ma'am adi lakshmi is not unmuting herself the last question we are taking uh, how does the trust for a deity which is not registered uh... yes it need not be registered as a charity so far as the deity is concerned if a trust could be proved that is sufficient if there, there is no formality like creating a private trust it is going to the public it is for the deity the deity cannot act by itself but any indications that is sufficient it need not be registered we have a judgment for to that effect i don't remember as of now Yeah, Gayatri Ranjan. Does the trustee have a similar rights as that of a person having a li limited uh, life estate? Yes, all all trustees have similar rights, equal rights. We cannot distinguish it unless the deed specifies it. Unless there is an instruction, all trustees have the powers. This is a general act granting powers to the trustees. Yeah. The for. Uh, This is now. I am an Indian working in Singapore. My friends are in India. We would like to trust uh, start a trust in India, and we want it to start its branch in Singapore. What would be the procedure? But uh, can you can you come again? Pardon? Okay. Can can you read the question again? What what the sum and substance is sufficient? See, trust property should be in India to invoke the trust act. If the trust is uh, trust property elsewhere. that is apart from india only the law of that land governs and the trust can be created by anyone competent to contract that should be registered if it concerns the property in india okay 
So before we part, I will re request Adi Lakshmi, ma'am, to. Uh, thank you so much. Time. It was really an excellent session by uh, Mr. Mukund, and he has uh, brought in everything possible, and uh, even he answered the queries of the participants very well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mukund sir, and uh, we should thank Vikas for connecting South and North once again on this uh, Beyond Law CLC platform. It is a pleasure listening to him. Uh, before I part, I welcome all the participants who are new to Legal Legal ZLI platform to kindly join at uh, five thirty session. I'll ask uh, one of the volunteer to post the link. It is on the mediation by Jawad uh, sir. He's a very renowned mediator. And thank you, Vikas, for connecting us. And we will be keeping connecting with you for all the sessions. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mukant has shown that he is a good marathon runner plus a sprint runner. He could uh, race it across the time so that uh, we could finish the webinar by before five thirty. And tomorrow, friends, as Adi Lakshmi ma'am said. we are bringing speakers from and resource person basically our intent is to bring good speakers tomorrow again from madras tomorrow is suits relating to cancellation and setting aside of the documents and decrees nature limitation and court fees this is by mr k prabhakar he has already taken webinars on our series and his webinars are very good that i can even say that ma'am adi lakshmi and mukant could vouch upon that that mr mukant uh, that mr prabhakar is a good speaker plus having immense knowledge so do stay connected with us tomorrow and everyone stay safe stay blessed and thank you mr mukant and to all those participants who have been watching live on facebook instagram and F facebook we are thankful along with the participants who have watched connected with us along with the volunteers of uh, legal elite group thank you jai hind